So what is going on everybody? Fernando Silva here with another video. And if you clicked on this video, that means you probably updated to iPadOS 15.4 or even iOS 15.4. And you're here to find out exactly what's new because we got an abundance of new features and I've been using it since that initial beta one release and every single beta has brought us a new feature to talk about. So in this video, we're gonna talk about every single new aspect from the headlining features like universal control all the way down to the little nuanced features inside of the settings that were brand new inside of 15.4. So without further ado, grab your iPad, grab a little notepad or something, and take down some notes on exactly what's new with 15.4. Let's get it. So let's get right into this video, everybody. We're gonna go over 15 features of iPadOS 15.4 that you probably didn't know, but you should definitely check out. And we're gonna go from kind of like the most important or most out there all the way down to the more nuanced ones. So the first one obviously has to be universal control. So I'll put a little demo in the B-roll. So universal control is a new way to interact with macOS and iPadOS. So you can use all the peripherals from let's say your iPadOS device and still control a macOS computer, but you're not changing the OS on the iPad. So you're still using iPadOS on the iPad, you're using macOS on the Mac, but you're using let's say the magic keyboard to control macOS and then vice versa as well. So you can use your peripherals from your Mac computer. So macOS can then control iPad OS. And some of the things that we learned with universal control overall, and the main things that it can really do is pretty much file transfer depending on what application you're in. So you can move files from your Mac OS and drag it into like the files app inside of iPad OS and it works in that function. So been loving universal control is again, it's another software update that changes the way that you use your iPad. So kudos to Apple for finally releasing universal control. And we were like six to nine months in the waiting for universal control to be actually sent out to the public but now everybody can try it. The only thing you gotta make sure is you're also up to date on the latest software version on Mac OS for it to also work. So it needs to be the latest version of 12.3 Mac OS in order for Universal to work. And it's very simple to set up. So Universal Control, by far the number one feature with iPad OS 15.4. So I'm actually gonna pull the iPad up right here for the next few features. So feature number two has to be the new emojis. So we did get about 33 new emojis. So if I go in right here into Safari, go right here, you can see that this is the first look at those new emojis. So we do get a bunch of new ones, like we've got the melting face, the dotted face, that new kind of like, you know, puppy dog eye face. So these are all the new emojis. We got some kidney beans, all this good stuff, uh, a crutch, a slide, a tire. People always seem to like more new emojis, you know, the more variety, the better. So it's so hard to complain about some new emojis. Feature number two is actually with Siri. So if we go down into our settings, go into Siri, where are you at? Siri and search, and then we go into Siri voice, you can see that under the American variety, we have a fifth Siri voice. So Apple added a fifth Siri voice into the American variety. They did not add any other voices into any of the other regions or categories or varieties. But again, Apple did bring a new voice. So always welcome to have a new voice in there. So Apple, thank you. Feature number four is actually Apple kind of covering themselves a little bit. So in lieu of people using AirTags to track cars, track other people, use them for like malicious acts, Apple, what they did was they added a new prompt into AirTag. So whenever you do connect a new AirTag, Instead of it just connecting automatically, you now get a new prompt that lets you know, hey, like AirTags are solely to track items that belong to you. Using AirTags to track other people without their consent is a crime in most countries around the world. So again, this is Apple kind of covering themselves because you do have to agree to this prompt in order to use the AirTags. If you don't agree, you can't use the AirTags. By agreeing to it, you know that you're gonna be using it for your own personal items and nothing else. But that's a new prompt that came with all AirTags moving forward on iOS and iPadOS. We also have a brand new widget. As you guys can see on my home screen, this is the new Apple Card widget. It's technically the wallet application, but the only card that you can see or the only card usage you can see is your Apple Card. So it's only for Apple Card users and it is editable. So you wanna edit the widget and change the period of time of what your spending looks like. You know, I can do yearly if I want to, we'll get out of there. And you can see all my statistics on how much I spent on a yearly basis with the Apple Card. But that's a nice new widget that Apple brought onto us. Another much needed update, especially on the iPad side or solely on the iPad side, honestly, is in Control Center, we now have a keyboard brightness widget, right? So we can go in here and manually change the brightness directly from our control center for our magic keyboard, where before we would actually have to go into settings, go into general, then go into keyboard, then go into hardware keyboards, and then from there you can change the brightness or we had to rely on the ambient light sensor from the iPad. So now all you have to do is go into your control center. By default, it's not in the control center, so you do have to add it, but it's now an option to add it to your control center, which I love to have. We also got some new features to native applications when it comes to SharePlay. So if we go into an application like TV, we have Ted Lasso right there. You just press the share button on the top right. We now have an option to just press SharePlay and start sharing and watch the content in real time with whoever else you want to share the content with. So bringing SharePlay to more native applications and more third-party apps as well and making it easily accessible, we'll probably have more people using it. So that's always good to have. 
And then we got some new updates to iCloud Keychain. So if we go into settings and you just search passwords, basically your iCloud Keychain. So I like to just search passwords to get me in there. And then you go into one of your sections, you actually have the ability to add notes for that login information. So if you want to add notes for that login information for any reason whatsoever, you just press add notes and you have the ability to add notes right then and there. So that's a cool new addition to the passwords and iCloud Keychain. So it's beautiful to have. Let's get out of there. Apple is also finally allowing third-party developers to take advantage of the 120 Hz ProMotion display, which I think is mostly on the iPhone Pro side. So the 13 Pro and the 13 Pro Max are first-year adopters of the ProMotion display. iPads have had the ProMotion display since 2017, so I believe app developers have had the ability to use 120 Hz in order to optimize those applications. But now on the iOS side, they're bringing that to third-party applications for iPhone 13 Pros and Pro Maxes. So feature number 10 is actually inside of the notes application. So if we go into settings, go into your notes, go down to your quick notes section and do corner gestures. You have the ability to do two new things. So the first one, I think it came out actually in the last 15.3 update, but now you can switch what your left corner and your right corner swipe does. You're kind of limited into what it can do. So it's either a screenshot, quick note or nothing. But now you actually have the ability to use your finger to pull up those gestures. So you no longer need the Apple Pencil for the gestures to work, especially with the quick notes. So if I want to do a quick note, left corner swipe with my finger, there they are. And then you have the right corner swipe for screenshots. So using your finger to be able to do those things is a welcome addition. So you no longer have to spend 130 bucks just to have access to the quick notes feature. And then to go back to Apple TV, if we go into our settings, go to Apple TV and then go into up next display under device preferences. This is something new. So Apple TV shows and movies played on this device to influence the for you recommendations, update your continue watching across the devices, but you can go to up next display and you have the ability to do a still frame or the poster art. So if I go into poster art, go back to Ted Lasso, or we go into watch now, you can see that the poster art is Ted Lasso. But if I go over here, do still frame, go back into here, it changes up to the still frame of where I was in the show while watching it. I don't really know what the point of that is, but it's a feature that's tangible and visible and I thought I'd share that with you guys. So if you guys are more poster art people or a screen grab of where you are in the show, you now have the ability to customize that. And as we go deeper into these features, they are getting a little more nuanced and a little more niche. So this next one has to do with actually your warranty. So if we go into general, we go into the about section, go into the limited warranty. This section was always there, but now you can see that Apple actually put a quick little app card in here for the Apple support application. So before 15.4, this Apple support section just wasn't there at all. You just have to actually download the app yourself. But here you have the ability to just quickly download the app and then go through Apple support application to get any of your warranty needs figured out. And I won't lie, the Apple support app is actually very, very useful. And then for the last few things, one of them is actually in the app store. So if we go into the app store, go into your, you know, your face, go into your iCloud, you now have the ability to look at notifications and change it up. So Apple added a new section of notifications inside of the app store. So you can see new features and updates, but then also recommendations and offers. By default, this is how it is. So the first one is checked on and the second one is checked off, but you can check it on if you want Apple to recommend certain applications for you or keep it off if you don't want Apple to mess with that at all. So at least Apple gives you the option and by default it's turned off but you can turn it on if you want. And then the final two things that I'm gonna to talk to you guys about is inside of the podcast app, you actually have the ability to now filter based on episodes, on play, downloaded. And if those podcasts have like seasons or something, you can actually filter by season as well. So you no longer, because before that you only had two real options to sort by the latest or sort by the oldest. Now you have a bunch more options in order to sort podcasts. It makes it a little more intuitive and easier to navigate. And then finally, we actually got support inside of the developer notes that Apple is now supporting PS5 DualSense like trigger controllers, which means ideally we should be getting some sort of rumble pack support, which is something that we haven't had at all yet. So yes, Apple has been able to use PS4, PS5, Xbox One, and Xbox One X controllers to connect just via Bluetooth normally in order to play any game that you would want to, but they didn't have any rumble pack support. So on game like shooting games or maybe sports games, it was a little bit off and a little bit weird to play, but now we should be getting that with PS5 controllers and hopefully with Xbox controllers coming soon. But those are the 15 things that I think you guys need to know. Let's get out of this view and finish up the video. So that's pretty much gonna do for this video, everybody. Like you saw, that main headlining feature of Universal Control is another wow factor, right? It's another example of Apple giving us a software update on a hardware device that we already owned and changes how we use that hardware device, right? First, it was 13.4 cursor support. Then we got the magic keyboard that changed up exactly how we use the iPad. Now we have Universal Control. So again, it's just a lot of positive things happening to the iPad Pro and I'm excited for iPad OS 16. But then you have the smaller things like the new Siri voice, like those 33 emojis that came out. So all good things with 15.4. So leave a comment down below what your favorite feature was we talked about, or maybe the feature that you didn't know came with this new update because 15.4 had a bunch of them. 
And if you made it to the end, leave it a little dolphin here. And if you guys want to see my last video on that iPad Air 5 and what to expect from it and what it means for the iPad lineup, click on one of these videos. That's going to do it. I'm out of here.